We're here today to uh, demonstrate some of the common pitfalls that we come across for your exhaust ducting. I'm going to show you what they are, how impactful they are, and how to avoid them. Do you call that duct tape? Yeah. Are you, are you really going to use that on the duct? This is uh, an example of a poorly put through flexi duct rung. But the one thing you shouldn't use duct tape for is ducting. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that you can see the duct shaking tells you there's energy being wasted on the duct, not actually moving air. People do that for sound because it makes it quieter. One reason it makes it quieter is because you're just not getting much airflow anymore. Yeah, that's it. This is definitely something you'd see. So you wouldn't have, have this support there. You'd have a, a pinch right at the inlet. That's pretty typical. Right, Sean, so uh, we're here to discuss and demonstrate some uh, common mishaps that you get with the installation of extraction ducting. So I believe we're going to start with uh, the materials, the installation, and the point A to point B, how you get there efficiently. Cool. We've got uh, your standard 100mm flexi duct. We've got some semi-rigid flexi duct. We've got a few different tapes to go through for your fastening and uh, supports. So this is, uh, this is standard 150 mil? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, 150 mil. Standard 150 mil flex duct. Mm -hmm. You see this all over the place, right? Yep, yep. What are the problems with this? Well, you have the tendency to sag. There's uh, quite a few ways that you can restrict the opening size inside, just through uh, with the supports um, and just your general layout of how you're getting around obstacles to get to your point B. Yep, and so how do you do it well? What's the right way to do it? The right way is to not use uh, zip ties in the way that you can see here. Uh, they've quite, got quite a small surface area and you can see they restrict the opening of the flexi duct. Okay, so uh, because that's, that's pinching the duct a little mm -hmm. bit and every time you pinch it, you can squeeze less air through it, Absolutely. right? So it restricts airflow. Each little bit pulls, pulls away from the performance. Absolutely. How could you improve that? Well, there's a number of options you have, but uh, the, the simplest and easiest way you could use a piece of cardboard to spread that surface area of contact out so it's not restricting. So you're using the cardboard here, put this under the zip tie, now that's, that's taking the weight, not the flex duct. So the flex duct is able to stay fully opened and not, not pinched here. It's also, uh, you could probably put a, a hole here and run the, run the zip tie through the hole so that this stays in put for a long time. You're, you're talking about doing the, the fixings more frequently and regularly, right? Yes, yes. To, to avoid sag, what you want to do is have your uh, support spaced out about 1.2 meters apart. This reduces the likelihood of saggage. This is uh, an example of a poorly put through flexi duct run. As you can see, there's quite a lot of saggage kinks. What you really want to do is have it in between your support, fully stretched out without sag. Okay, so from the fan to the end, you want the duct run as straight as possible, as few turns as possible, yep. and uh, supported as evenly as possible so that it's as straight as it possibly can be. Absolutely, absolutely. And the uh, orientation of your fan can be important for that as well. You know, if, if you're facing the way you want to be, you'll you reduce the need for a bend going in and out of the fan. So you've got two different kinds of duct here. So oh, yeah. there's this, this flexi duct, which is the most common thing we see all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's everywhere. And then, then what's this? This is a, a semi-rigid flexi duct. As you see, this uh, holds its shape much better with uh, fastings. You don't have to worry about straddling this as much because you see the difference between the two there. One, you've got some very severe restrictions. Oh, that's really pinched. Really pinched. And here, you see it's hold its shape completely. And, and it's pliable. This is semi-rigid stuff that's handy because you can shape it as you need to go. This is what it looks like when it comes, uh, when, you, when you buy it, right? Yeah. So this is one length when you, when you buy it. And that goes from here, one, two, three, three and a half, maybe four lengths. Yeah. Uh, this expands three and a half for four times mm -hmm. to its original length. So, but it holds its, its shape. It's, it's yeah. pretty, pretty tough. It's possible to dent it. So yeah, you of course. You have to take yep. care, but yep. um, 
All right, that'll that'll hold its shape a lot better than, mm -hmm. than flex duct. There, there is a, the, a third option you can go for fully solid ducting. Yeah. Um, but this you'd have to buy uh, specific you uh, well specific corner pieces. Um, you have to just plan out your layout beforehand and know what needs to meet uh, match up to what to, to get where you need to go. Right. So maybe you might do um, uh, adjustable elbow right at the termination. Yeah. Like right at if it's coming out of the soffit uh, out of your roof space. Mm -hmm. um, that final bend you want to make sure that never crimps. Yes. And does a restriction right at the end. Mm -hmm. So you'd mm -hmm. use a adjustable elbow in that spot because that's one bend you don't want to screw up. Absolutely. So maybe save that for that. That's one piece of rigid duct you use right there. Yeah. And then the rest of it, you can go yeah. with something semi-rigid. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. And then this tape is most often what you see, right? Uh, yeah. So what's that? What, so what? this is uh, duct tape. And the wait, wait, <laughs> you call that duct tape? Or yeah. Are you, are you really going to use that on the duct? Oh, no, no. <laughs> because <laughs> why, why, why did we use... Uh, we used it on here. Why is that? Well, this is to show you what not to do. It's also just because it's so easily removable. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Because uh, this stuff, uh, give it a little bit of heat and a little bit of time, and it will just, uh, the adhesive and the plastic just gets weak, and it, it degrades and melts. This thing often uh, disconnects over time. The, the tape itself won't melt, but it just comes loose. Yeah, ab absolutely. The, the one thing you shouldn't use duct tape for is ducting yeah obviously <laughs> obviously but so some of these these products look more familiar to mm -hmm. what i what i would have seen in uh in north america this definitely wouldn't have seen this looks like uh stuff for uh christmas uh wrapping <laughs> yeah. uh it's it is it is quite shiny but it's uh definitely shouldn't be used for anything except christmas wrapping this stuff it's a foil tape it's a bit heavier gauge than just straight metal but it has a backing here, and it's it's a good bit stiffer. So this this would be better to use than the, the duct tape, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And then this is what uh, we always would call the real deal. This is a butyl-backed metal tape. So this stuff is sticky. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you put that on, this stuff basically f uh, oozes into any of the cracks and stays there forever. It's really difficult to remove. And that's the whole point. Another option we've got is uh, the Uripa Silverback Tape. It's a uh, high tack tape, easy to rip and tear into sections. And very pliable, gets a nice airtight seal. And it's available from tighthouse.com.au. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to demonstrate today is how those common pitfalls accumulate to reduce your flow from your system. Right now we have a good practice flexi duct run set up. It's by no means perfect, but this should get a, a decent amount of flow. And um, we're going to start introducing those pitfalls and show how they increase resistance and reduce your flow output. All right, so your basic setup is you have a little Here's your house, you got your fans serving the house, and that's where it's going out the roof space and out to, uh, to the termination outside. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna measure the impact on the flow once you start messing with the duct work. Yeah, yeah. All right, exactly. so let's, let's go, okay. let's do it. So this is a inline mixed flow exhaust fan. Okay, and it has a speed control on it? Yeah, speed control. We've tested a few of these, and this is uh, one of the most efficient ones we've seen, probably the most efficient. And this has an EC motor, right? Correct. So it's made, made to run continuously, quietly, efficiently, and it's got good performance. So uh, on, on the previous day, we've done some efficiency tests of flow per power between this fan, this fan, and a few other generic models. And um, the results show that at, at, at every power usage, this is uh, superior and more efficient. And it's not just about power as in electricity. That's not the only thing that matters. No, it's, no. It's like, for each unit of, of power, how much do you deliver? Like, yes, what do I get for, for that? If I'm yeah. spending the electricity, am I getting anything? Yeah. Sometimes fans are sold on the basis of, well, it's energy efficient because it uses very little power, but you get very little flow. Yeah, not, not much bang for your bucks. Yeah. So, so we're gonna test the flow of the flow hood here. So that's a very high flow of 120 liters a second. 120 liters a second, okay. And then 
We're gonna start making this more typical, right? Yeah. So we'll make it shorter. Yeah. We'll add some crimps. Like what else could you do? Well, th this is just to the outlet at the moment. So we'll do this to the outlet and see, show you how much that is, that affects it. Then we'll switch out to the flexi duck on the inlet because I mean, maybe we should touch on that at the moment. We've got the flexi duck, which is kind of the best case scenario now. So now we've uh, introduced some extra sagging, some, some bends. We can even pull this a little bit this way. Just to... And this, this bend here is completely realistic. I absolutely see something like this on pretty much every duct installation. <laughs> yeah. Totally realistic. So it's 104, so by introducing those bends and more sag to the flexi duct, we've lost 16 liters already. Wow, so that's like, it's like a 15% hit just from that, pretty much just from that one bend. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now we're gonna show you the impact of switching from our semi-rigid to the flexi duct. So now we have a reasonably straight flexi duct run. Yeah, there's no visible saggage. So we'll see the, the impact from switching to the semi-rigid to the flexi. Okay. Wow, so that's gone down to 94.4. 94.4. Yeah, so, so that's, that's like 30% decrease. Yep. From the original. From the original. Let's make it worse. <laughs> okay. You mean more typical? Yes, more typical. So this is definitely something you'd see. So you wouldn't have have this support there. You'd have a, a pinch right at the inlet. That's pretty typical. We'll see how that impacts the flow. The fact that you can see the duct shaking tells you there's energy being wasted on the duct, not actually moving air. And again, this is totally typical for what you might see in the real world. Oh, absolutely. It was, I've seen worse, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> now it's dropped now down to 83.2. So we're, we've almost dropped uh, 40 liters, just shy. Wow. So that's uh, pretty significant. Now, there's uh, more we can do to make it look even more typical, right, Sean? <laughs> okay. When I, when I say typical, I should say uh, some more, more, more mistakes so we can re restrict it. Yep. So we mentioned before that over-fastening can reduce the, the flow. Yep. So let's just see. Your, your builder make, wants to make sure it's not going anywhere, so they're very, very concerned to make sure it's as tight as possible and all the restrictions. So this is really common where rather than cut a length of duct, a piece of duct to length, you just, just scrunch the extra duct onto the fan or something like that. You just use the extra, you don't bother to cut it to length. You just squish it, use the up, extra up like that. So now we've got 81.8. So less impactful than the sagging, but still you're reducing your flow. And it's all accumulative. So you might think, oh, 81 still sounds like quite a lot of flow, but this is uh, with a very uh, good fan, which is uh, pumping. So there's a, this is a good fan, and there's yep. only so much that the fan can do to yes. compensate for this stuff. You're just gonna restrict the amount of free area that it can push air through, so yeah. the fan can only compensate so much. A lot of homeowners, they, they move into a house and they just say, oh yeah, that, that fan's never worked very well on that bathroom. Some of them work well, some of them don't, and, then, and no one ever knows why. But Absolutely. it's pretty common to see when you crawl around in roof spaces like you do, mm -hmm. you find uh, crimp ducts, disconnects, yep. uh, things that have been bunched up, smashed, uh, ripped. Um, yeah, but... And if no one ever checks these things, if no one ever measures them at the time of uh, completion, you don't know. Yep. You don't know what yep. you're getting. And you, and you uh, picked up on, on uh, another uh, common point, which is uh, also impactful in, in other ways, is uh, ruptures, you, you, you might end up pulling uh, air from places that you don't want to and dumping moisture in places that you don't want to, creating condensation issues. Absolutely. So we tried to get to this a little bit here, that um, extra duct length just hurts, but it's super common when you, when you see a, uh, an installation. You'll see uh, just a little bit of, of duct needed, but then the installer will just use the whole length because they come in, in a kit. This is how it comes out of the package, right? So instead of using this much to connect the fan to the, the uh, register and the ceiling, 
they just use the whole thing. Yeah. And all that, that duct just gets draped there. And I've heard people do that for sound because it makes it quieter. One reason it makes it quieter is because you're just not getting much airflow anymore. Yeah, that's it. Because it's Absolutely. just, it, the duct losses are so bad that the fan just doesn't move much air anymore. So yep. that's one way to reduce sound. Yep, yeah. Great. <laughs> So we, we just run this uh, generic fan on, on its high and low settings and it was using around 35 watts of power <clears throat> and was producing uh, 42 litres on the low setting and about 45 on the high setting. So now we're going to see for the same amount of power usage on the same duct run how much air we get from the Expeller EC inline fan. So this fan it can work on very low settings and still be quite efficient. And quite quiet but as you crank it up it does get louder but the flow gets more okay we're there or thereabouts 65 65 for so for the same amount of power this is pulling a lot more air yes even in spite of the very bad ductwork yes as you can see having a powerful fan can um, get you out of a lot of situations that's uh, quite a sizable increase just from one fan to the other for identical duct run. And when you say powerful, actually, it's using the same amount of power. This fan's using the same amount of power as this. Yes. It's just pulling a lot more air. Yes, yes. So this it's one's more efficient with the power it uses. Per watt, this mm. one pulls a lot more air. Oh, absolutely. So even in spite of the very crappy duct run, mm -hmm. this one's still doing more. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, for, from, the, from the data we gathered, there is a, there is a curve where this Expeller EC is super efficient at low power and more efficient at high power. So we're, we're sitting in the, in the middle where it's actually least efficient power per watt, but it's still much more efficient than the generic model. Okay. So takeaways are a good fan will help in yep. spite of a crappy duct run. Yes. But you can do everything possible to make better duct runs, mm -hmm. use better materials. So yep. this, this cheap flex duct, uh, try to minimize that as much as possible. Yes. Minimize the length of the extra flex duct. If, right. if they sell it to in a six meter kit, you yes. don't have to use all six meters. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cut to size is uh, very, very influential. Cut in to this. size. And we learned different things about duct tapes. Mm -hmm. Basically, don't use duct tape. Yeah, the, don't use duct the, tape the, for the stretchy, ducts. <laughs> yeah, for stretchy ducts. The, the stretchy vinyl uh, mm -hmm. tape is not good. You want to use uh, metal back tape. Uh, especially with a good adhesive, butyl backed adhesive is really fantastic. Absolutely. For the duct work, instead of using flex duct, consider using one of these semi rigid duct kits. Correct. Especially for the, the tricky bends, you know, right at the fan or right near yes, the termination. Yes, unavoidable bends. Yeah, right. so for the, those things where you know you're going to have to make a, a turn, uh, use that. And then if you have to use flex duct, keep it as straight and well supported yep. as possible. Straight, simple. And then use basic basic strategies like use more supports, more frequent supports, and yep. then use, use things to support the yeah. duct work. And, 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 and the, the supports, they should, they should straddle. They, they should, you know, the duct work should be sat on your supports and, and not pulled tight and restricted. Yep. All right, so lots of things to get better performance. Absolutely. Not just energy efficiency, but also just sheer performance from your fans. Yeah. Nice. 100%.